Princeton University in Princeton, New Jersey, today announced the end of its all-male educational tradition. They made the final decision to admit women to the university, uh, not just to admit women to the university, but to do it within the next eight months. Arriving on campus in 1969, there was a tremendous amount of hubbub. And as soon as we heard that that was what was going to happen, we, among ourselves, decided that we would apply. When we arrived on campus, there was no housing. It felt like a, a small group of women on a male campus. The university was ready for co-education, but still adjusting. And most of the precepts I was in, um, I was usually the only female in the room. I say in the room because, of course, there weren't a lot of female faculty members either, although there were some, and they were very important to us. They had systems, if you will, for understanding what to do about spouses who are women, but the, what do we do if it's a woman faculty member with a male spouse, nobody knew how to reckon with that. Look over yonder. What do you see? The impetus was to have a place for us that felt defined by us. It was extremely important to just meet and talk and talk from the heart about what it was like to be a woman, for it to be 1969, 1970, 1971. You know, it was, uh, the, the Vietnam War was, was about, and feminism was really taking hold in a different way. And we wanted to talk about politics and personal lives and well, how we envisioned our futures. So much happened in a relatively short period of time uh, from us coming in as the vanguard to being involved with every aspect of the fabric of university life and in leadership roles. I am woman, hear me roar, in numbers too big to ignore, and I know too much to go back. We are definitely a class of women who are there ready to take on the world. The active female athletes were a mix of sort of what might have been labeled feminists, but most of us were just saying, hey, I want to do this and there's no reason um, I shouldn't be allowed to and I'm not going to take no for an answer. That I think the reason why my works focus so much on race and gender and how they intersect is because they do, they, they, not only do they intersect, they're very parallel. You know, this question of um, how does a woman come to find her own voice and her place in the world is to me very intimately tied into the question of how you go from being an immigrant to a citizen. I think, I think that the difficult thing is to, to assimilate, but to do so in a way that is not that is that you can still hold on to who you are. I think that the, the male-female ratio was moving toward more balance while I was an undergraduate. 
So um, as women, I think we felt we could pretty much do anything on campus. Um, we, we certainly hoped for more female administrators, faculty, and coaches as mentors. Um, but basically, I think we knew that we belonged at Princeton and that Princeton belonged to us. For women in the sciences, um, especially in the Department of Molecular Biology, it was actually quite fantastic. Um, there were several very young, uh, established and accomplished uh, professors, um, including at the time, uh, Professor uh, Shirley Tillman, now President Tillman. I don't think I would have imagined as an undergraduate that in my lifetime, I would live to see a woman become president of Princeton University. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. To have a faculty member like that, so admired uh, and so well known across the campus, uh, be selected as president was simply uh, exhilarating. And to have it be a woman. Well, I think uh, the significance for me was not uh, as a woman or even as the first woman president of Princeton. I was really focused from uh, the instant I knew that I was going to be president on trying to be the very best president I could be. But I do understand completely that for many others it had uh, a, a deep significance. We had a long and storied history in which we were largely a male institution. Uh, women had, as you know, had arrived on campus uh, relatively recently, uh, given our long history. And therefore, I think for many, there was a significance uh, to having the first woman president. We knew we'd been picked to lead we weren't sure what we were going to lead or where we were going to lead, but we were ready to take on anything. I credit my Princeton experience for turning me into a leader. Life on an all-male campus was easier than going into a male-dominated work world. Princeton is full of women who are very set in what they want and their ideas and it's great to see them in leadership positions all throughout campus. My favorite thing about Princeton has been its people um, and yeah a lot of those people have been women and I don't think I would have stepped up to the leadership positions that I have um, if it had not been for the past leaders that came before me. The women speak their mind here on campus and it's it's been a great experience all around. I think Princeton is a place that has the capacity to empower students. Uh, we want students to arrive on this campus already prepared um, to be uh, stimulated, to be challenged, but for me the most important thing is when they graduate they feel empowered. Uh, ready to take on the world, ready to make a difference in the world. And I hope that as much for our women students as I do for our male students, uh, we're going to need them all in the future. And that's what our job has to be going forward at Princeton. Tune every heart and every voice. In prayer.